So I've had a lot of requests to do a uh, small bird painting and I thought I'd give it a shot today. So I'm going to take you through it from start to finish. I'll show you my reference photo. This is just a royalty free reference photo that I got off of a royalty free website. So this is uh, what we will be working off of today. Because it is a very neutral bird, and this picture obviously has a filter on it, um, the bird will be the neutral part of the painting. Oftentimes, when I am working on a very uh, neutral subject, I'll do a very bright background. But I've decided for this, this piece that I'm going to keep the whole thing rather subdued and I'm going to use um, sort of a, a neutral green background for this bird. So I'm actually going to use an ink tense stick and I will wash it in with alcohol. So I like to just go over my entire surface. I'm using UART 500 grit paper. This is my ink tense um, stick. I just like to cover the paper and I think I'm actually going to use two different colors to get a little bit of variation. Something a little bit darker because the bird's quite light and I really want him to stick out. I kind of look at where the bird is light, that's where I'm going to put in some of the darker background. I might go in later with pastel on top of this wash and change change the background around. But for now, this gives me it gives me a good starting point. So now I'm going to, uh, going to get my my alcohol and wash that in. have this really old fan brush that's worn down in the middle, um, but I like it for sometimes for backgrounds, depending on what I'm doing. Um, it just gives me a really nice natural looking effect. It's always a bit of a surprise to see what these ink tense colors look like because they're so much darker in the stick than they are when you put them on this paper. But I really like keeping it natural and just lightly kind of doing these X-like motions with my brush. This will take a few minutes to dry. I find that if I use water with the UART paper, it it does tend to warp a little bit. I do it anyway sometimes. The warping is not, not that big of an issue for me. I just don't really mind is what I mean to say. If it warps a little, I can always tape it down. Not trying to get this uniform. I want it to look ununiform and very natural. There's actually some some alcohol drips starting to form, which I don't mind. They will probably be covered up by the bird because I'm going to center my bird. But even if they do show up, they kind of make a nice effect. In fact, I may add a few drops on purpose just to get a little bit more of that look. We're gonna let this dry and then we'll start our drawing. So I'm going to sketch in the bird. The way that I do that, it's um, I'll just find a unit of measurement. So what I usually do, I'm not a, a professional at this by any means. I don't do, don't really do portraiture. I, I usually do landscapes or I'll occasionally do these little birds. But I'll usually just take the pencil that I'm working with 
and I will find a section of it. So I'll use, say, from the tip of the metal here down to the blue section as my unit of measurement. And um, I am going to find, and because, I just want to say for a second, um, because this bird, it is fairly small, um, and the surface that I'm working on is, is fairly small, it's just a six by eight, I will very likely make the bird the same size um, as he is in this photo and put him on my surface that way. If I chose to make the bird bigger, then I would simply, if you're not familiar with um, a, using a unit of measurement, once I figured out, let's say, um, his head, if I'm using this as this is my unit of measurement, if the bird's head is that big in my picture, let's say I wanted to, for simplicity's sake, double it, I would simply take two of these, so I'd come down to here, and now to make it double, that double would be my one unit of measurement on my surface. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and keep the bird the same size. So, so the first thing I'll do is just pick where I want my bird to sit, and I think I'm going to have the center of interest and have his head up in, in here. So I'm going to make my first mark of where I think I want his head to be. And I think I'm going to have it come up to right about here. There's my first unit of measurement. That is the black part of his neck. So here's the top of his head comes down to the upper section of his, his neck, that black area. Now going to look at how far across his head is. Okay, so I'm going to look at my angle, and I can use angle sighting to find the head here. So if I look at my bird, angle of the head, kind of like that. I like to hold my pencil, not like I'm writing, because it makes it way too structured and hard and artificial. Holding it down farther keeps keeps it lighter and looser, makes it easier to make adjustments. Three, his body is approximately three times the size of his head. So, one, two, three. I'm gonna put the end of his body right about there. I need to see how far across his body goes. I'm going to start at this far edge. One, two, three across. So starting in the middle, actually one thing I need to do here is look and see according to his beak if I had a plumb line, I could look and say, from the tip of his beak, if I went straight down, that is where the outer edge of his body hits. So I need to get his beak in. I'm going to do that real quick, and I'm actually just going to pencil that in without measuring. I can always adjust it later. I'm not going for a technical version of this bird. It's an impressionistic version, but I still want it to identify his bird. So I know this is the bottom of his body. I'm going to look at this angle. It's going to come fairly straight down. Then it comes, he has a little bit about halfway 
out towards his beak. It comes out right there. And then it really comes out at an angle right to where his beak, the end of his beak is. And it actually comes out a little farther than that. So, there we go. And then it comes down at quite an angle. Two. Two. I actually, just using my fingers, I'm going to double check my proportions. I think I'm a little bit off. If I look this head like this, I can see that I've made it a little too short. I always double check. There's one, two. I'm actually going to bring his body down quite a bit. I'm going to look at the angle. It's going to be like this. So that's it. It's um, fairly loosely drawn in. There's the front of his body. This bird is very fluffy. He's like he just like he just showered <laughs> and dried, got a hair hair dryer, took a hair dryer to himself. So he's got a lot of really fluffy feathers, so he looks kind of fat. We're going to look at how far across this. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put in the branch he's sitting on. It's going to come across like this. And it actually branches up right about there, like that. loosely getting my lines in not too worried about it all this can be adjusted once I start coming in with my dry pastel I may even want that to come down a little bit more like that okay I want to focus a little bit more on his, his head, his face. That's really where the focal area is. And it's important to get that part fairly accurate. And um, if I look the photo, I can see that his eye is about half the size of his beak. So if I look here, I can take a measurement and I can make his eye half that size. Come over. And it is right above his beak here. Right about there. He's got this beautiful dark head. just going to sketch that in. Sketch in his cheek. This I can see right now is going to take some adjustment right there. <clears throat> Always adjusting. That's part of the process. Always looking at the picture as a whole, figuring out what's off. Doesn't look right? Well, why? It's problem solving. Might take a few tries before I get this drawing down. Drawing is not my strong point. That's why I love working in with landscapes so much. It's um, 
so easy to make adjustments to a landscape. Nobody knows, but with a bird, it's a little bit different. You'll know if it's a set. Say, that's not what a bird looks like. <laughs> Okay, I've gone ahead and finished my drawing. I really didn't want to make you guys sit through that tedious process. And there may be quite a bit of adjustment, you know, as we go forward with um, the, the pastel. But I'm now ready to go ahead and go on in. So the way that I start with these birds, um, you know, it appears there's a lot of detail work perhaps, but there's really not. The place that there is detail will be where I want your focal, your, your, you know, where I want the focal point to be, and that will be the face. That's the one place that I will be careful, um, maybe, you know, the little, little feet, but I'll be careful with these areas to get them ac as accurate as possible. So I'm going to start actually just with a pencil. I'll often use um, charcoal, but I just happened to grab a, a, a black pencil, so that's what I'll use out of my jar. And I'm going to put in the eye. I like to look at the shape of the eye, which I did not do when I sketched it in. I really was just sketching in the, the area that I wanted it to be. Um, so if I look at his eye, it's, it's fairly, it's like a, a diagonal oval, and I'm not going to put in too much. I'm going to leave it right there. That actually might be it. That might be all that I do on his eye. <clears throat> I'm now going to get just the, the shape of that beak in, and before I do, I want to do one more quick um, unit of measurement, I want to make sure that it's in the right spot. To me, it looks like it might be a little bit farther away than it, than it should be. So um, I can see that this is the one place that you really have to be careful because if you don't get the face right, it's not going to look right. Um, so I can see that his eye is on the same vertical plane as his foot, so that's correct. If I look at his beak, I can see that his beak is about, gosh, let's see here. It's, it looks pretty accurate, actually, where I've got it. It's about an eighth of the way over, uh, you know, he's got about an eighth of, a, of, a, of his body left um, from the, the beginning of his beak there. So that's about right. This will probably end up coming in a little bit. I probably went out a little far. So I'm going to go with it. I can see that his beak does sit um, below. I think that I may bring it up just a little bit because I can see that his, his beak sits right below his eye. So it's really perhaps just a little higher and a little smaller than what I had originally put in. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that in. And look at the angle. I'm always looking at the angle. So in the picture, it's if it's kind of like this, I'll literally just bring it over from the picture and, and see if, that's, if I'm on the right angle. And I am. Go ahead and put that in. And uh, see that there's a very dark line underneath. So there, there it is. There's, that's all I'm going to do right now for his beak. Um, that's it. Okay, so what I usually start with is the focal area, which is going to be his, his face. Um, looking at the reference photo, I can see you know, just to, to start, it looks like he's got a black, uh, black head, um, and then he's white, but obviously that would be really boring. So I'm going to start with a dark, and I will put in the focal area first before I do the background around him. So I'll just make sure that this beak and this eye and this head area looks correct. 
If it doesn't look correct, I probably won't be happy with the painting. So I'm going to find a nice deep dark um, to start in around his upper section of his head. I always want to put my darks in first because we're working in pastel. It's easier to layer a light over a dark. If you try to layer a dark over a light, it can get muddy very quickly. I'm going to come in with a really dark purple to start. And I'm just going to lay it in. I will be more careful around this area than in the rest of the, the piece. Uh, I want it to look fairly accurate. So, um, in fact, before I go too much further, I'm going to define around his eye just a little bit more. And to do that, I think I'll actually take another pencil. This might be a little bit light. I'm going to go a little darker. I want to find a dark gray. Okay, I've got a couple of dark grays here. I think I'll start with this darker one. And I just, I want to get a little bit of definition around his eye so that I don't lose it. I always try to be loose even in, even in these very small areas to get in and really start, you know, digging in like that. It's not going to give you a result that's, painterly. I'm not a, an ultra-realistic painter. I like my pieces to look like you can definitely tell what they are, but I also want it to look like it has a personality and a very painterly loose look. So that's what I'm going for. Once I've put in a mark in these detailed areas, as well as most of my paintings, I try to leave it. I don't try to fuss with it. That's, that's what overworks it. So looking at this, and I will be coming back in most likely and probably fixing up areas around his eye, but that's enough to get me started. I am also going to take this dark gray and come in a little bit on the beak. I can see that there is a little light shining there and at the very very tip and then the beak actually gets quite white but for now that's that's okay I'm gonna come actually under just a little bit with some of that pencil and uh, the rest of the beak is quite light so I'm actually just going to leave that for a minute and come back and work around this eye area. I'm going to come back in with my, this is actually a very dark violet. And um, I don't like to use black that often, as a lot of artists don't. It's just kind of a black hole. I'd rather have nuanced color. So I'll probably use several different very dark colors to create what to an untrained eye might just look black, but it'll have a lot more, um, a lot more interest in it. I'm going in the direction that the bird's fur, trying to go in the direction that the bird's fur lays. Um, as I get farther away, I don't want to I don't want to be too careful. I'm trying to get just this basic outline of, of, of the shape of the dark area. That's what I'm going for right now. And in these really small areas around his eye, it's going to be difficult to not uh, get too detailed. It's, it's hard to stay loose. So at this point, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to put, put my darks in. I can always adjust later, try to leave a mark, put down a mark and leave it. Looking at the shape. And I'm going to do the same underneath here where it's quite dark. I can see that that dark comes right up to his beak and comes over. 
um, down a little bit like this and it then peters out up along his neck area kind of like that there is a small edge of dark which I'm going to put in for now I'll probably go back over it but just as a road map to where it is and I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm going to um, leave that where it is. I can see I'm going to need to do more work, obviously, um, on the eye and the, the beak. But I first, I want to get some of my darks in because I like to see the surrounding area. I want to know what value is right next to that eye so I can see if it's all working together. So I'm going to work a little bit more on this, this dark area. I'm just looking for a really dark neutral to complement that violet. And I found one. This is sort of a, a brownish Violet. It's more on the neutral side than the last, <coughs> the last uh, pastel that I just used. Just slightly dragging it. I'm going to go ahead and get pretty close to that eye. And I tap a lot, tap that color in. Sometimes using the edge. Less is more trying to put it down and leave it alone. I'm going to vary up my marks a little bit. Where I was working this way, I'm now going to turn my hand and work vertically just a little bit. Looking for those darks. I can see that there is another dark on this side, right? Kind of comes down where his neck right at the end of his neck there. So there's that, leaving it alone. I feel like there's enough of that in that I'm going to now come in um, into here and, and work in some dark neutrals. There's a lot of gray in this bird. <clears throat> But I don't necessarily want to make it all gray. That would be boring. I'm going to come in with a nice mid-toned violet. I guess that I've decided this bird's <laughs> going to be kind of violet. I'm going to put some of those marks where I see them. There is this line of dark. And that may not be dark enough, honestly. But you know what? It's in my hand. I'm going to, I'm going to go with it for now. Um, so I can see I'm probably going to move over to a bit of a warmer mid-tone shortly here. But for now, let's go ahead and stick with this, following this dark line. And I'm just using the side of this pastel to indicate where those are. I'm using, trying to use a very light touch and just lightly stumble that color across the bird. I can see that some of that color comes down. It, there's his foot, which I haven't put in yet, uh, but it gets darker around his foot. It also makes sure that this is rolling. Yep. It also, um, there's quite a bit of darkness down here as we are coming into the tail area. So I'm going to get that in. <clears throat> I can see that there is on his breast a little bit of that dark color right there. And that's, that's almost it as far as the darks. Now up again around face, I want to be a lot more careful. I am going to bring a little bit of that mid-toned violet around his beak, just like that, just to indicate. Don't need a lot. Always looking to 
see if I've got my shapes correct. I'm going to move to a lighter value to go around his eye just a little bit because there's a light section where his eyelashes are. <clears throat> I'm actually going to come in with a, that might be a little bit light, but let's see what happens. A light, a light neutral gray. It's almost verging on the blue side. And uh, just slightly tapping the edge, just like that. I do want to come in with a lighter color um, on the up, upper part of the bird's head. I do think now fairly soon I'm going to start working the background as well, but I want to get a little bit more of, you know, of his upper head established. So let's find a color to go in there. I think I'm going to go with this neutral. I love my neutrals, if you haven't noticed by now. <clears throat> Most of my paintings, <clears throat> at least my landscapes and my birds, often consist of a lot of neutrals. So I can see that there is not a lot, but there is, um, as the head, towards the back of the head, it really becomes a little bit lighter in these very light strokes, and I'm quickly, quickly, quickly putting those strokes in and then leaving it alone. I can also see some of that mid-tone kind of comes up and verges with, merges with the head right there, so I'm gonna lightly tap those in. <clears throat> I'm also going to add some of this for unity. <clears throat> There's a little bit um, that merges in and actually if I squint my eyes I can see that these colors the violet and this neutral bluish gray are not that different the value is not that different so I'm actually most likely going to need to come back in with a lighter color in these areas but I'm not sure yet because I really haven't established any of my other lights yet to find out so so there we are I want to come back in with another dark this is not um, his head and this area is not quite established enough for me yet <clears throat> before I do that though oh no I'm jumping around a little bit sorry but I'm going to <clears throat> put a little bit more black into his eye to help him come alive and kind of get that beat going <clears throat> I'm going to grab my pencil, my black pencil, and just lightly do a couple of dashes to show where that eye is. <clears throat> I am also now going to put in something light here for his beak, and I will use a pencil for that because it's quite light. I'm not sure if this is the right color, but I'm not that concerned about the color, honestly. It's not about getting the color correct as it is about getting the value correct. That's, that's close to all I need right there. I don't mind letting a little bit of my background show through in areas. In fact, it creates a unity in the piece that otherwise might not be there. And it also gives it a sketchy look that I like. And especially since I've gravitated towards a little bit of a cooler color scheme in the bird, this very warm background helps offset that because it's nice to have both warm and cool in your piece. You do want a dominant color, uh, but you know, and I'm, I'm actually just doing this on the fly. I'm not sure what that dominant color is going to be. I suspect it's going to end up being quite warm. When I come in with those lights, those lights will be quite warm because these darker areas, I think of them almost as shadow areas. And since we are going to have warmer lights, the shadows will be cooler. That's just how it works in nature. So let's come back in 
um, and establish a little bit more on this. Let me get the beak a little bit better, um, get my black, Just pull this in, really get that beak established. I do want a little bit more of that eye. Just a mark or two makes a, such a difference in the way that the eye appears. You can really easily make him look angry or confused with just if you don't get the angle right, and it's really just practice. <clears throat> I am going to come back in um, with a little bit. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I take that back. Let's start to get some color into the background. Now that I've got the basics established of his head, I want to start bringing in some color, which means I need to make some decisions about what that color is going to be. Um, so I'm thinking that it would be nice to kind of, I kind of like what's already going on in the background. So I think I might try to find a neutral that almost matches what's going on. And I'll start a little bit darker. I've lightly sketched in these um, branches that the bird is sitting on. So I'm, I'm not going to cover those up because I am working on 500 grit, which doesn't have, I mean, it has plenty of tooth, but um, I, I don't want to cover it up and then have to have to uh, reestablish my lines. So, so I'm going to find a background color. And kind of liking that, but I want to go a little bit greener. Let's see if I can find. I kind of like this. This is a nice, has a nice warmer tone. So I'm going to just come in and start laying in some of this color. I'm thinking about where the light is on the bird. The lights are here and here, here. And so I want to, I want to put my darks against my lights. I may once I start going in with this a little bit more, with this pastel in my hand, say, you know what? I really like how some of my background is peeking through. And I'm not going to add too much of this. I'm not sure yet. Let's see what happens. I'm working around where I know I'll be putting in some of these branches. Not too carefully. I mean, I don't want it to look fake or unnatural. So I'm going to bring, I kind of like that, um, I'm going to come down, now I don't want to lose his tail, there's his tail, his tail's pretty light, so I am going to come down and under some of that color, and this is definitely a lighter area, so I'm going to come in with a little bit of my color there, and uh, I think that's pretty good for now. Um, just kind of like that. There we go. Maybe a little bit up here. Uh, one thing that's really going to come into play is the shaping of the head. That's where I need to be careful. Uh, I can see right now that I think his head is a little bit too big, but I'm not going to worry about it too much yet. I want to get more established in the bird before I get too concerned about the shape. I can fix the shape with negative painting of the background. So I think now I'm going to work on, just clean off my fingers a little bit, since I'm getting ready to go into some lights, I'm going to start working on this area. I'm going to find a mid-tone, a light to mid-tone bluish gray. You know what? I take it back. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit warmer. Um, let's see what I can find. I'm actually going to come in with this. It's almost like a very light 
pink color. And even though it does have, it's pink, so it has a little bit of red in it. So it's, it's warmer than these violets because the violets have blue in them. So this is warmer, but it's still staying within the palette because right, violet also has red in it, red and blue. So this is gonna read as warmer than what I have laid down in my shadow areas and my darks, but it's still in the same palette. So I'm gonna very, be very careful here. I, this is a right around the, the face, which is the focal point, and I don't want to, oops, see I got a little bit in the eye. I'm not gonna worry about it, I can correct that. And it may just resolve itself, we'll find out. I am using the corners of my pastel here, and I'll use this hand to give me a, a little bit of um, steadiness. And I'm just looking very carefully right here. This is the important place to be careful. Okay, sorry, small technical difficulty there. Um, but what I was saying is that when there is such a stark contrast between values, say, between, um, you know, like, like his, his cheek here, that's okay because I want the focal area there. But let's say, you know, that as it's coming down here, he's, he's or even in this back area here, I may want to take some artistic license and soften that very stark value. So I kind of did that there and I like how that looks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more of that one step up dark value. just in this area, and I may go back in with the dark again, but we'll see. And also, I may just actually bring that, if I look at the picture, I can see, I want to find the right edge, that right around its eye, there's a little bit of light. So I want to get that in. There we go. And then I'm going to come back in with the second uh, more more muted violet and kind of just tap along the edge almost gives it a feathery look just like that a couple little ones in there okay I do want to be careful here around the beak because it's a focal area I'm going to just harden up those edges a little bit. And I can also see that it is just a little bit lighter right above his eye coming down to his beak. So here I am with this one step lighter violet, muted violet. And I, I need to really look at where that is. Just right in there. And I'm going to call that good. Do you see how some of that under color is showing through? That's nice. I like that. It, again, it gives the piece unity. So let's move, um, let's move a little bit more into this area here. Let's start, um, start refining some of this. I'm going to find a bit of a warmer color Maybe I'll even bring in a little bit of a similar color to the background. I'm not sure if I'm ready to do that yet. I like this, I have this taupe color. It's got a teeny bit of violet in it. I think it's going to work quite well. It's a little bit darker. I'm still working on my mid-tones. So I can bring that. I see that there's some areas in here. And now that I'm away from the head, I want to get a lot looser. I really want my marks to be free. I want to look at where they're going, but once my hand hits the paper, I want them to do their own thing, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to be careful about where I put the marks as I'm looking on the paper. 
looking toward the paper, but once I actually get to the paper, I let my hand take over a little bit and not worry so much about it. I'm going to come up, there's some little marks in his black fur area, so I want to just suggest those like that. And again, there's a nice bridge. I might slightly smudge sometimes, just I don't like hard edges in my work, only where I want them. I'm the master of where those hard edges go. I can see that there is a very light, but it's important, edge right here that distinguishes where his body and his neck meet. Now that's not correct, but I can fix it, which I think I'll do right now by negative painting around it. So I'm going to come in with a lighter color because this is my focal area, this head, and I want this to really pop. So let me find a lighter color. Um, let's see here. I'm going to come in with this. It may not be light enough. As you can see, I have a lot of pastels. I love my neutrals. And um, this color is going to work well. So here again, we have to be quite careful around the beak because that's where the eye is going to naturally go. And if we don't get it right, it's not, it's not gonna read, read like we want it to. So there we go, this is, you can see that, see that? That's really carving in. Now I have to be very careful about the shape of what I want here. And already I've gone in a little far, but I can fix that with a dark. Hey everybody, so this is my first video. It's just a trial and uh, my husband and I figured out that it wasn't, um, that we didn't have it aligned the right way. So this is much better. You can see um, the reference photo that I'm working off of. So anyhow, um, thanks for your patience with this first video. So let's get back to it. I'm going to go ahead um, and put the tail in and work a little bit um, around the background just a tad more and get these branches in because I want to see everything as a whole before I continue much farther on the bird. So let's get that tail in. I can see that it's, it's fairly dark. It's not as dark as um, the, the feathers on his head, but it's a really nice mid-tone. So I'll probably go with that same um, dark mid-tone that I used um, up here on his upper head. So I am just going to use the side of the pastel and just flick it, flick it across like that. I want to keep it really loose and I can also see that there's a little bit here um, you can see that it gets very dark in between where he's sitting and the branch so I'm actually going to take the very very dark violet that I used and I'm just going to it looks like two little I'm always looking at the shapes <clears throat> it looks like a little M so I'm just gonna mark that in like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put in, um, I'm going to actually finish up his tail a little bit more before I start putting in the branches because it's behind. And I like to always put what's in behind if possible. It doesn't always work out that way, but if it's possible to put in the things behind because then you're not having to work around them. Things that are forward, obviously, um, you know, it's better if, if you work on those uh, last. So let's get a little bit more done with the tail. It's not in the focal area. Um, it's got this vertical bringing you up into the focal area, which is nice, uh, but I don't want to put too much detail in there. I'm going to go ahead and grab this lighter kind of a violet, mid-tone to Giro violet that I used in his body. And I see that there's quite a bit of mid-tone over here, so I'm just going to tap. And I will, there's a line there, I'm gonna just draw it down like that. And same here, just a nice quick movement. Very quick. 
Don't want to work too hard at it. That will look artificial. You come back in with just a little bit more of this slightly darker color. It'll be nice once we get our lights in and things really start to pop. So that's, that's about it on the tail for now. I want to come in a little bit more with the background. There's a hard edge here I don't love. Um, you know, I always talk about how I, I love to have the background show through, but it's not always as easy as it sounds. I get a hard edge like this and all I want to do is cover it up. So I'm going to go find a color that I think would work well um, for, for the background. going to actually try something. I hope it works out. Um, I'm going to try a little bit of a, of a terracotta color. It's a light orange, kind of a light terracotta. I'm going to slightly scumble it in. Let's see how that looks in some of these lighter areas and just bring it down. And you can see that my strokes are just very, I'm going to actually go ahead and go over some of the sketching where I put the branches because I don't want it to look like it's cut out. So um, just going to go like this and you know I'll even bring a little bit into the bird because I want him to blend in with the background. I can see that there's some warmth and a mid-tone over here in the bird uh, right above where his foot is. So I'm actually just going to go like that, bring that color right into the bird. I'm also going to do that up here a little bit. I actually see a teeny bit of warmth and I'm just going to lightly tap it like that. That's it. I'm pretty happy with that and I'm going to leave the background as it is for now. I can still see, actually I take that back because I, I do see that there is um, one little mark there that I'm, I'm really not happy with because it's right in the focal area. I think I want to get rid of that. So um, I'm going to come in with a background color and negatively paint around that little line. I believe it was probably a sketch line from when I first drew in the bird. I'm going to use the lighter, a lighter tone um, that I used down here by his beak because I want, I want, this is the focal area and I want that to pop. I want his, I want his um, black right there to pop. So I need to be careful because this is this is an area that you're going to really notice. So there we go. I like that. I just did a little swish. A little swish right there. Let's take a look. I always step back once I get to this point because you don't want to make big changes. I do, there is a little bit of a crest looking um, angle right there that I don't love. So I'm going to very lightly just go like that and that's better. I'm going to slightly blur that out with a little bit of that darker color and the more that I look at that I'm going to come in I have a tone in between those two colors and I'm going to kind of come in with a little bit of it and just really create almost like a stuccoed effect and you see I don't like how that lighter tone that I put in is really sticking out. Do you see that? How obvious it is? I think what I'll do in that case, let's hope I don't uh, mess it up, but I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to just lightly rub it out. That'll just soften that edge. And now it's not so obvious and now there is a little bit of a line and I'll just take my finger and smudge it out. And that's better. I like that better already. I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm comfortable putting in um, some of these branches. So let's grab in the picture. It's, um, it's actually a fairly mid-toned 
neutral dark. This, this piece is pretty neutral, so I'm going to grab, grab something for that. be a little bit too dark. Um, let's, let's take a look. Actually, that's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and start with this and we can always, we can always cover it up, but I've started to kind of lose where my lines were, my drawing. So I need to look at that carefully. So I can see that here's the bird's foot. So I'm really kind of just using an edge, some of his fur, actually it's not, it's not hanging over that much. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go right over that area, just like that. And I'm really just using an edge and pulling down. I don't care. It doesn't have to be drawn in. I actually don't want that. I want it to be broken. A broken line is, it looks better. It looks more natural. So I started one there, but I don't really like it. I think I'm going to just have this one here and then have, have a branch coming up off of this main branch. So I'm going to put that in. I don't want to lose this foot right there, but I guess I can just go over it and I will remember where it was and put it back in. Okay, since I don't like that, I'm going to come in with some dark background and just cover it up. And I don't even mind covering up a little bit of my branch. You know, it just, again, it's part of keeping everything loose. Okay. We're at a point where we can start putting in some of the lights, which is always the really fun part. So I am going to, um, let's see here. You know what? I take it back. Before we do that, let's finish off our branch. Let's just get it out of the way. So I'm going to, you can see that it's, when, I, when it comes to something like a branch, there's a lot of little details. I don't worry about that. I don't. I don't want people to focus on those little details. I am going to just make it a bunch of little dashes and broken lines to make it look like the impression of a branch. So I think what I will do is grab a pretty, a pretty neutral color to start. I'll probably do three colors. That's not bad. Um, so the light is coming down and hitting the bird from this direction. So that means it's also going to be hitting the branch from that direction. So it's going to hit some of the back. It really starts to hit up in here. And there is this branch down here, but I don't think I'm going to put that in for now, which is okay. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll take it and just draw and push it in and then pick it up. I'm going to come in with, um, let's see here, just half a teeny bit. And that branch, the more that I look at it, I want to go just a little bit darker. It doesn't show it darker in the picture, but I think it would look better if it was a little bit darker. So we're going to make it darker. And it will just be in a few little areas. It might take a little bit of finessing. I might take an edge and just tap it and let it go, just like that. I think I'll do that down here. And then there is a mark there that I don't love. So I'm going to just get rid of it just like that. And now if there's anything I don't like, for example, 
I either need to make this branch thicker or thinner because it's this is where the branch begins and it gets thicker as it comes up but it's thin down here that doesn't make sense so I need to widen my branch so I'm just going to actually take it on the bottom and run it down just like that and then I will take um, I'm actually going to take a little bit of the orange. It'll help kind of draw, draw our eye up and around. So I'm going to use that to negative paint just a little bit. And I'm, I'm good with that. That's fine. So now it's time to start putting in some of the lights on the bird. Um, I did just notice one thing though before I do that. I want to adjust a little bit. I don't like that sharp edge. If you look at the bird, there's not a sharp edge between his beak and that fur. I'm going to fix it. And I'm simply just going to very carefully, I find that if I just take a finger and it's good as an anchor, uh, it doesn't really affect the painting if you're careful. And um, I'm just going to tap to get rid of that hard edge. Being very careful right there. There we go, that's all I needed. Do you see how that completely changed that area? And I'm, I'm much happier with it now. Okay, so let's go in with some lights and I think what will really make this painting pop is to use warm lights. So I've put in a lot of violets, a lot of cools and now I'm going to come in and really really bring them to life with some some yellows and some really super light neutral ochres. So I'm actually, let's see here, let me find the right color. I'm going to start with something like this. You can see that it does look pretty similar to this filter, whatever the filter is that this photographer used. I think this could be nice. Let's see what happens. I'm using a very tapping and release. Tap and release. That's how I work. And it's always important to think about how far down. See, I started to go like this. I don't know. In this case, it would work okay because this line of light value does go down that far. But if I didn't want it to, I would need to be working like on this edge, on the short edge. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. I actually see some, some more warmth and pinks in there, but we'll get to that. So I am going to look at the shapes of the light. And there is a light here right below his eye put that in and I'm going to put it in the direction that I see it. It almost makes a V so I'm also going to bring some over here and <clears throat> comes all the way down almost to his foot. It's almost time to put those feet in. Okay, Let's put a little bit of it coming down into here and I'm actually going to go warmer. I see some really beautiful warmths down in here. This is almost the same color as that background. I actually want to go a little bit redder. I see red and almost like pink in there. So I'm going to get that in. I like that. I'm always trying to be careful to not overdo it. You put down a mark and then you just leave it alone. I see some of that pink over here. And sometimes it's nice to make kind of a harder mark, uh, especially with a pretty, like an accent color like this and leave it. I need to get those feet in, so let's do that. 
I'm going to simply use <clears throat> my black pencil and just make some little marks. There's, there's a foot. Well, there's needs a little bit more like that. And his other foot is right there. So I'm going to put one there. There it is. And I really don't, especially in a piece like this, worry too much about being perfect. I don't want it to look perfect. What I do want to do, though, is fix that edge right there. I, I don't like that dark, hard edge. It's not the foot. That's where I was putting in some of that, that dark. So I'm going to flick up and just go like that. That's better. Now I'm going to um, continue, now that I've got those in, I'm going to continue a little bit more with that, with that uh, warm, that warm tone over here. And this is the fun part. This is where we can really start to put some feathers in, which is just tapping. You could do this with a round pastel. Um, you would need to find an edge on it, and you could use the edge. A lot of it is, is about learning how to make specific marks with your tools, and that's what we're doing here. So um, I want to come back in with a little bit darker value. I'm starting to lose some of that dark value. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in with some of my background color. I like doing that a lot. So let's bring in some of this green. And what I'm trying to achieve here is darkening up so you can see his feathers. There we go. You can see where. Okay, so let's find a, a bright, bright. I, I don't want to go white. I won't use probably any white in this painting. But I want to get quite a bit lighter, and I really just want to find where do I really want to make it pop. So what I think I want is to make it pop right under his eye and right on his breast. So I'm going to start on his breast. That's nice. I like that. I'm going to come down a little bit this way. I'm really just tapping. I'm going to come up into his eye area. I'm using the edge of my pastel. Kind of digging down just a little bit. I'm going to bring it over into this area like that. And he has got a lot of furry feathers. I'm going to go one value lower. In fact, what I may do is, let's see what this looks like. It's a neutral light pink, lighter than the one I put in before. This could be very pretty. Just to tap and really show how he just took that bath. <laughs> That's what it makes me think of anyway. So, um, but I don't want to cover everything up, you know? I mean, I, I want, I really want this. Now, I don't like that, but I can fix it. It's no big deal. Um, I want it to look natural. I want it to look loose. That's the, that's the style I like. So let's come over here. I do see a little bit of lights down here. There's this patch over his foot. And I have to be careful because it's a small area that I don't want to add too much into. There we go. And. I am actually, let's see here, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a little bit of that pink that I was just using, and I'm going to put it a little teeny bit on the branch to give a little bit of highlight. Whoops, that's okay. In fact, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make a branch there. So that branch is now branching off itself. And a happy accident, it's fine. Um, let's put 
some in right there. Don't want to make them too, you know, these are right next to each other. I need to put in, put some in down here. There we go. And that's a little artificial looking. I'm going to, there we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. Let's step back and take a look. of this video, I'm getting pretty close to finished on this piece. Um, if I was not recording, I would probably take a little break and come back and see what I might not like, what I might want to change. Um, I'm blurring out a few little edges that I, you know, sometimes I'll do that. Like, look, that will really help create some soft edges. But I do think one thing that will help this bird really pop um, is to add a couple of little accents of bright color. And the other thing I'm noticing as I'm looking at this is I don't like how his tail just kind of doesn't leave the page. I want it to leave the page. I don't want it kissing the edge. So we're going to take care of that right now. So I'm going to use a mid-tone, that mid-tone purple. Um, in fact, what I may do is go one lighter. I don't want it to be a really dark edge that draws the eye down there. That's a really pretty color. In fact, I might use just a touch of that in the rest of him. All right, up in here. I like that. I might add that to him um, in a few strategic places. Oh, that was my Alexa talking to me. Let's see here. I do see there he has this. See, it's a lot of, it's a layering process. Um, it's careful observation and seeing what the painting is trying to tell you. That's, I'm getting pretty happy with it. What I think I might do is come down into this area and carve negatively around the bird a little bit. These feathers right here, I'm not crazy about. So I will probably do that in just a second. So I'm going to actually come in and what I'll do is just tap a little bit, like get rid of that. I like that better already. Look at that. It makes a, it makes a difference. I'm going to step back again. This is the point where I really slow down. And I think what he could use, um, we've, we've, kept this overall a very warm piece. He's got a lot of shadow, cooler shadow areas, darker areas, but the background is very warm and we used a lot of um, reds and oranges and yellows in his, in his feathers. I think he can use a little bit more of the accent, uh, very, very light color, which is a super light kind of a yellowish um, tan. And then we'll come in with one last accent and call it done. So I'm going to go ahead and when I'm looking at where I put this really bright color, I'm almost looking at it like a pathway. I'm looking at, I'm going to actually put a teeny bit down in here to bring us up to the eye. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap for those feathers, just like that. And uh, what I may do is take one tiny little bit very carefully on his beak. That's a little bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a dark. Let me find the right dark. Could actually even be this purple. That may not be it. I need to think about this for a second. Let's see here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come in with my pencil and very carefully smudge that out a little teeny bit. And then what I can do 
Oh, I know. This will be an interesting. I have, I don't know if you guys ever use these. It's called a color shaper. And I love these for working occasionally in areas that are tiny that I just want to smudge. So I'm going to just take it and just lightly pull down. There we go. That's it. And now that I did that, I need to step back and make sure I'm still okay with the beak. And this is where it gets dangerous. I'm starting to fuss. But overall, I'm happy with it. I'm going to come right back in one more time and give this a little bit of a hard edge on the top. Just like that. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is come in with some kind of an accent color. And I think what would be really pretty would be a purple, some kind of a violet, because we already have a little bit of violet, but a little bit more violet would really pop. So, or even like a pink. So, I'm kind of thinking this beautiful pinkish violet color. And I want to put it strategically somewhere that is going to accent, it's going to flatter the focal area without taking away from it. And I think that would kind of be around this breast area. So, you know, let's test out this color first of all up on this. And I like that. I like that color. I think it'll work well. And I actually think it would also look nice little teeny bit right there. I'm going to bring in a little bit, tap, tap it away, tapping, smudge slightly. I'm going to bring a tiny bit down into here. I'm almost done with it. That's almost enough. In fact, I may even cover that one up. And is there anywhere else that we want that? Just there we go. I am going to cover a little bit of it. So as you can see, my process involves a lot of layering. And that's how I work. That's how I feel that I can accomplish, sorry about that, what I, what I want to accomplish. Which is a natural, loose, dreamy kind of effect. So I think I'm close to calling this guy finished. Um, what I might do is I do have a white. It's a Giro. I might just take a teeny, teeny, tiny bit and give it just a couple of little smudges, little taps right in here. Just, um, just to highlight that area. And so that it's not too much of a line right here, we're almost, you know, I'm going to put just a tiny bit of that right in there. It's a bit much, so I'm going to slightly tone it down right here with some, some of my pink. This is what I'm talking about. This is the, this is, uh, this is all that layering. And, you know, you got to have some good neutrals to get this effect. I'm going to slightly come in with just a little bit of this background color, and I'm pretty much done with this guy. Putting in this background color can even make it look like I didn't paint in that area, which I like that effect. There we go. I really like that. In fact, I may just see if there's anywhere else I can add some of this color, and I think I can. I think I can add some of it into his tail. I like that. And the last thing I just want to do is look and see if there's anywhere I might want to smudge out to create more soft edges. So 
Um, I'm kind of thinking that this white right here is a little bit much, so I'm going to just simply go like that. And I also think that this line right here, there's these two white dots. I don't like them. I'm going to simply smudge them out a teeny bit, just like that. I mean, now I'm just kind of deciding if this is something that I would like to do and share with you. And uh, until next time. So I thought I was finished, but I decided as I often do um, that I needed to step back and take a break. Since this is my very first video, thanks for being patient with me. And uh, you know, my next videos, I'm planning on making more videos. My next video will be um, a lot better. <laughs> I've learned a lot as far as the editing process goes, noise in the background, etc. So, so I'm looking forward to uh, making the actual quality of the video better. But anyway, I just wanted to share with you guys that usually when I'm working not in front of the camera, there is a point where I need to step back and take a break because when you're so involved in a piece, it's very difficult sometimes to say, I know this is finished. It's very rare that I finish a piece in one, in one sitting without at least stepping back for a half hour, an hour, or sometimes a day, um, so that I can come back with fresh eyes. And I did that after I finished the video, the, the previous video yesterday. This is the next day. And I realized a couple of things I was quite unhappy with. First off, the shape inside of the beak, the light that was hitting it, I was not happy with at all. So I did fix that. I went in, I adjusted. Um, the other thing that really stuck out to me was I had left basically this side of the bird's body unfinished. And at first I thought that I was okay with that, that it was just sort of a very artistic viewpoint, that this was just fading off into nothing. But the more I looked at it, it just did not work. The shape needed to be there for us to say, oh, you know, there, the, to not feel that half of the bird was missing. So I very simply scumbled in uh, a little bit over here. Additionally, as I looked at it from a distance, I realized that the branches were too similar of a value in relationship to the background. I didn't really want to go a lot darker with the branches because it just didn't, I don't know, part of it is intuitive, but I felt that it would take away, it would create this very dark line across the, the surface, which I did not want. And since the light was coming in, I decided to go ahead and make the branches lighter. Um, as well, you know, they are lighter in the photo, so that just made sense. So I went in with a lighter cream colored uh, warm tone and, and lightened up some of these branches. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I hope you all enjoyed.